Hey, welcome back, another day, another vlog. Happy to be with you. What you get through today, wow, what a day, what a, what a time frame a day makes, a difference, a difference, that was a word, a difference a, time, a day makes. Wow, English is a second language today. I um, hope you're all well, everyone. It is Thursday. Um, I got a bit done last night. Uh, I got the got everything into the video, finalised all my photos, got them out, ready to go. Finalised, uh, went through, started all my naming process. So I go through the way I do it in Premiere Pro, and this might be not sure if you do it that way, but I'd like to go through, name all my files, and, and give them something mentally that I understand what that each file is. Get them all named first, and they'll reset their order into alphabetical order with the list. Um, but at least I can see straight away by looking at it that that's dark with intro, or intro in dark, or something like that, or good, bad, whatever. I'll put on that so that then when I start putting stuff together, I know I can go and grab what I need for the next section. It makes it really easy to put the video together. I've found it's made things a lot smoother for me to do that. Um, weather's definitely changed here in Perth this week. It's a lot, a lot cooler. Uh, change of season's coming. The, it looks like the end of summer. We're still getting some lovely bits of sun, but it's nice, cool mornings, uh, not super mega hot during the day. Um, so it makes a big difference. So that's very, very good. Um, what else is happening? Uh, yeah, you see this, um, I found my old, well, it's not my first digital camera, but I did have the original Canon Elf when that came out, when I traveled uh, through Europe for eight months in 97. Um, but then I think after that, I come back and when I did my Europe baseball trips and stuff, I had this, I found this in the cupboard. It's a 7.1 megapixel Ixus 700. I actually thought about selling it and they're like 50 bucks, so it's not even worth selling it. So what I'm doing, I'm just chucking my backpack. I'm gonna try and just take some photos and when I do some shots and then sort of compare it to older, what the old technology does. I thought that was a, an interesting way to look at it, but um, we've come a long way. I guess you look at this, the new Lumix that I've got, the tough, ultra tough weatherproof, the size difference is huge. Um, and what's this? Uh, this does 4K and it's there. Yeah, I think it's 20 megapixels compared to seven. So a massive difference. And this was the state of the art when I bought it. I remember it cost me like 400 bucks or something Australian. So it was yeah, pretty exy. So something different. I thought I'd chuck that out on the thing. And then also new, I finally bit the bullet and I got one of these, which is a little panoramic adjustable from iShoot just on eBay, um, really well made actually, better than what I expected. Um, fully machined, this will slot straight into your tripod so you don't even have to, you can screw it in if you want, or you can just slot it in the existing one if you just want to use it for thing. But it'll give me that for those panoramas. I've got all the panorama, all the measurements there, so a lot, very, very cool. So I can't wait to use that tool and I'll probably do a whole video on that one and try and get some shots once I can find something to use it with, but um, so a bit, bit happening on that in that regard, so very, very cool. Um, the photos come up really, really well from the video, so super, super stoked with that and happy to see it. Right, if you haven't already seen it, um, we'll get straight in it because there's a fair bit to go through. Two pages, page and a half anyway, on my notes. If you haven't already seen it, Apple has announced the new, three new objects. The new iPads are out, they're released. You can actually order them online. We'll, uh, I wanna talk about Qantas, gonna talk about AMD, Nikon, and some more Canon stuff. So there's a fair bit in the show, so hang around. I'll try and get to it all first. We're gonna go straight into the Apple stuff because that's sort of breaking big stuff. Um, the iPad, new iPads out, 11 and 12.9 inch. Pro ones, uh, they went dual camera. They haven't gone the three camera like the rumors were speculating. Um, it's big selling item is this new Magic Trackpad uh, or Magic Keyboard that has a trackpad built into it. And also it's a magnetic 
pad where it'll let you sit the pad up like this while the base sits on the ground. I've tried to get a photo, a screenshot to chuck it up on the uh, thumbnail to give you a bit of an idea. But if you, you're looking at buying one, obviously you'll go and see it. But it looks pretty good. I mean, it's a magnetic, so it's just you don't have to slide it in or out or like my old iPad here, it's in this book, which is really good for watching videos. Basically, this will let you sit the iPad up like that with this being the keyboard. And then that just sits in the air and then you just type away here with a new trackpad here. That's basic example of what it is. Um, I reckon it's really good having it in this form factor when I'm on a plane. It's probably the only time I use an iPad now anymore. Um, apart from if I'm just sitting on the couch looking at reading through emails um, and just simple stuff because I really, I, this is like an old iPad Air 2. This is four or five years old now. So it's, I can't do any editing. It doesn't have pencil. So it's not really much other than a video machine or for watching movies. But it looks really good, this form factor. I think that was a great idea with the new keyboard. Um, it's dropping on the 25th of the 3rd, so that's when you can order it. So that'll be all underway. Um, the keyboard won't be coming out till May, so you'll have to order this iPad and then order the keyboard separately. So a little bit of a wait for that, which is a little bit shame, but I'm sure once you get the iPad, you can get that, play with it, and then the, once the keyboard comes, it'll make it... It's not too much of a wait, about a month and a half. Um, right, it's a 120 hertz screen display, 600 nits, so super, super bright, super fast screen, true tones, P3 wide gamut, so it's got all the good colours, the screen, the Renown, iPads are Renown for the quality of the screens, so that hasn't changed. Uh, it's got a 10 megapixel and a 12 megapixel wide camera on the back. They don't have the telephoto one like on the phones. Um, they didn't say much about apertures and such, such, such uh, like that that I could see. Uh, it does have the LiDAR scanner, which is great for AI. So if you're looking to, for like your furniture apps or these guys that are doing AI or pictures or whatever, if your AI technology is sort of coming out, I guess a lot, uh, they're, they're talking about it a lot more especially for gaming and stuff like that. So it does have that LiDAR, so you can use that and walk around with your iPad and put furniture in the corner and test it out and stuff like that. So it does have that on there, which is not too bad. 4K video, uh, it has the new A12Z Bionic chip in it, uh, eight core graphics, um, so pretty powerful. Now this is the one they're looking at. They reckon it's as powerful as a laptop. I'm not sure what, it's a pretty broad statement and there's a lot of super powered laptops. I'm sure it's not as powerful as the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but um, I'm assuming they're looking at say a base entry laptop. Um, this is gonna be something that's comparable and that's why with that keyboard, now it's got all those functions. Uh, all day battery they're saying, which is actually 10 hours is in, if you look in their 10 tech specs, Wi-Fi 6, it's got a gigabyte LTD, which is access, so you can get to that, so that's pretty good. USB-C, four speakers, 2,500 bucks Australian for the 11 inch and $2,800 Australian for the 12.9. Now the new feature also is with the iPad, they've got a new mouse or cursor, so, and it's a round dot, it's not the your old original pointer, so it's just a round circle and it adapts to whatever it goes to. Um, that's part of the new features of it. So look, it looks really good. It's a, it's a lot of money. It's, it's a lap, it's a MacBook Pro 13 inch money at $2,800. So I guess it's aimed at those guys that are running around and just doing stuff on the fly. We talked about that ultralight the other day, super, super light little laptops. Uh, you could fit in a leather sleeve. That was really nice. Well, this is the one that's, this is the thing that's going to go up against. That's its competition, those ones. That was three and a half grand for an ultralight. Or you can get an iPad Pro that's probably going to do the same thing as that. That's a six core. Uh, and this is uh, an eight core. And it's, it's going to do some, it'll suit those people, those business people that don't need a big computer to punch and do lots of, I guess, video editing and stuff like that. This is not going to be able to do that sort of stuff, I don't think. But uh, yeah, if you're an iPad person, and that's what you use all the time and you just want that, and that's how you do your computer stuff. You don't need a laptop or a, or a big desktop. 
then this is the duck's guts um, and I think it'll do really, really well. So all happening on that front. Now, Mac, speaking of laptops, MacBook Air. So your other option is, and it's very strange that they're punching that as a laptop and then they come out with a new MacBook Air 13 inch, uh, 1.29 kilos, uh, four core, um, and it's 1.2 gigahertz i7 is the top of the range and that's a 10th gen chip. Uh, it'll turbo out to 3.8 gigahertz, so not too bad, 16 gigabytes of RAM and that's a $300 cost up. Uh, the total price, and this is where you'd see the difference, so you go to iPad at 2800, top of the range, to this MacBook Air, I priced it, went and checked it out, priced it all up, top range with all the fruit was 4,600 bucks, which is just insane. Um, you could get a 16 inch, base 16 inch MacBook and be far more powerful. So I'm not sure where they're going. I think the MacBook Air, I guess, is for those guys that still want that computer operating system, that Mac OS operating system compared to the ISO system. But there's a, obviously a, nearly a $2,000 difference and it's, you're going to be looking at pretty much exactly the same. A 13-inch MacBook Air against a 12.9-inch iPad Pro. Um, you even add on the accessories, the pencil and the, this new keyboard. You're going to be well below that 4600 so I guess depending on what you want. Um, now, the big things with our Air, uh, obviously we talked about the RAMs and stuff like that. Uh, you can get eight... Uh, 16 gigabyte RAM over eight standard. Uh, it's 512 gigabyte storage standard. You can go up to two tetrabyte or TBs. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That's 900 bucks extra. Um, it's like it's a it's fantastic bit of kit. Sorry, I give you the wrong price. <laughs> so that MacBook Air total price will be 3,500. That's with everything. So that's two two TB. The 16 gig RAM, uh, the i7, 10th gen, 1.2 gigahertz, that's all going to come at 3500 So it's still $700 more than the iPad Pro 12.9. So I'm assuming once you chuck the keyboard, it's going to be, I think they said about $350, bucks, uh, say four, five hundred, I guess, in Australian. It's going to be very, very similar depending on what operating system, I guess, you want and what, you, what you're used to and what's better for you is... The, probably the play you're going to make. Now, also the third one, which, and that's sorry, the, where I get to the $4,600 price, is the new Mac Mini out. Uh, wasn't much fanfare about that, but there is a new Mac Mini out. Six core, 3.0 to 4.1 gigahertz, uh, i7, eighth gen, so it's got an old two, two generation old chip, so it's not a huge, you'd think they would have put that to a tenth, I'm not sure why they haven't gone there. 64, up to 64 gigabyte of RAM, uh, configurable, that's a $1,500 add-on. I whacked that into the price, so that's a huge price, but 64 gig is a huge amount of grunt. Um, two terabyte storage, that's 900 bucks extra, very similar to the Mac Mini, uh, the MacBook Air in that uh, two storage cost, so very similar. And this one has a 10 gigabyte ethernet option for 150 bucks. So if you, if you're at home or you're using a business and you've got your, your different screens, so you're just maybe using LG wide curve screens or your, or your different size screens, you're not using that Apple screen technology but you still want that operating system, this Mac Mini might be the go and it looks like it's got plenty of grunt. Um, should be fairly good, small, little, small, still that same, still tiny little size, 4,600 bucks, fully optioned, that's a fair bit of juice. Um, you'd really want to be doing it. I think you could probably get away with a base model 16 inch laptop um, at about three grand roughly, and then put the buyer screen on top of that for a thousand bucks and you'd be probably a better option than this. So it's, it's, I think they really need to adjust that mini or do or really give it some grunt uh, if they are gonna sell it as a, as a computer powerhouse. Um, for that sort of money, they'd really need to put a little bit more oomph in it, I think. Um, it's not, not as really that super powerful compared to the laptops and stuff now. So don't know where that's gonna end up, the Mini. Um, Radio AMD has launched this new 4000 series uh, processors for laptops. So uh, the first one being the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7, and that's the world's first eight core ultra thin laptop. 
that's going to be coming out with it. Didn't look too much in that. It was more about the AMD launch. 4000 traditionally had some bad battery issues and quality issues. So hopefully with the way they've been on a roll with everything else, they're just now going to translate into some better specs and features over on that for the mobile circuit. So yeah, big things again for AMD, looking to bounce back after a huge, fantastic year 2019 to come into 2020 strong. And this 4000 series is what they're probably going to be pushing this year. And I would say well, if they get that right, then it's definitely going to be a hard year for Intel. Right, Nikon, uh, rumours abound for Nikon, more 1.2 aperture lenses to come out to be released soon. Uh, no mention of what or when or what size or what focal length, but they're just teasing a bit, I guess, to say that there's stuff coming. They have been smashed a fair bit by the guys on YouTube about the quality of the lenses that they have released for the Z range. Um, they're just not good enough basically they've released a base level but the lenses aren't good enough to go up against say yeah canon rf lenses canon brought out their top level glass first and now they're slowly introducing their base model level or intermediate level glass i guess now so uh nikon's sort of gone the the other way around they released their base model sort of stuff first and now they should be coming out with their top glass so that seems feasible what they were going to bring out i guess they're probably checking out what the field is and working out what they're going to be doing obviously most of it's going to be delayed at the moment so maybe mid-year we might get some more definitive answers or get some releases popping out um canon uh rumors abound on canon they have a 90 megapixel landscape camera coming for early 2021. Now we know about the R5, that's pretty much locked and loaded. We know that's coming, pretty much everything in it. It's gonna be their new Pro yeah, Kingpin. Uh, we've heard about stuff with the R R6. Now the R6, the room, new rumors out for that, but this new one, the long distance one is this 90 megapixel there was 150 megapixels thrown around uh, i was watching jared poland was talking about this um, over on his channel Fronos. He, he went to an event where they had a 120 uh, megapixel camera in 2015 that they were using for product shots and stuff so he said they can do it uh, but he doesn't think it's going to be 150 and there's a few rumors and bits and pieces going around about a 90 megapixel. And it's gonna be predominantly, basically like a landscape specialist shot. So you can get those high megapixels for big prints. And, and that's basically what it is. You get those, you get 90 megapixel, each shot's huge, but you put them together, you can do large prints, which is perfect for landscape. So very interesting on that. The video will be probably average on it, they're saying, so it's it's definitely going to be more photography based which is good i mean it's it's i think it's good to have a specialist one you can do one that's a a vlogging one uh a, a landscape or a thing that's that's a, i think a smart move by canon to spe give it a little bit of special you can have the one model and then five different ranges and all different specs to suit different people and different needs so i think that's pretty good now r6 rumors around uh 20 megapixel, 4K 60, 1080p at 120 frames a second. So that's really good, high definition. Dual card slots, probably gonna be a mixed bag, uh, be a CF Express and an SD, because it's gonna be the next level down from the five. Um, so that's possible with these card slot ones, the rumor I think kinda needs to really come out and let everyone know what's going on. Uh, no top down screen, so no screen on the top of it. Uh, low resolution EVF, so it's gonna drop down than the R5, so that'll, that'll drop off a bit. And the build quality not as good, so I'm assuming that boy, they, what they mean there is gonna be uh, weather sealing and stuff like that, which is unfortunate. I think the one thing I'd love in my M50 is a little bit more, uh, ability to know that I can put it out in the wet weather and have that I don't think you need to should have to pay considering most of the time it's just an, a few o-rings o-rings cost nothing um, and it's just a little bit of a design change surely they can put some more o-rings and ceilings in covers and stuff and 
it's I, sh I can't see why weather sealing isn't something that's sold more um, your 1dx super solid robust magnesium frame you don't need all that um, that's definitely like your r5 and your in your pro cameras but weather sealing um, should be something that should be definitely i think something they should be selling people on and it shouldn't be locked into the pro models it should come down to all levels except maybe your real base entry i guess but um so build quality not going to be real flash they are new rumors of a new battery style for that one um not sure what that one's going to be maybe it's going to be the same as the r6 i'm assuming if it's going to be very similar with just less features than the r5 and maybe a different frame and body or whatever then maybe the battery's gonna stay the same. You wouldn't wanna change too much. You wanna sort of just chop off a little bit and then I guess, depending. Um, and mid-year release. Again, that's a 12 frame, 20, 12, 20 frames a second sort of setup for mechanical electric. So very similar, as you can see, to the specs of the R5. Just a few little features taken away and chopped down. And I think that's what they really could do. So, and I think that that's gonna be our, our series range. So you're gonna have your R5, R6, and then you're gonna come down to your R, which I don't understand it. You go all the way down to an R when you start at a five. I would have thought you'd go on R, then R1, two, three, four, five. So five top and then come down. But yeah, it's a bit of a strange naming convention. But yeah, lots there. Uh, obviously, Canon's doing heaps, and as soon as I guess they can get back to full production, things will start moving a lot more, and we'll hear a bit. But the rumours are abound. There's a lot happening. That R6 is definitely coming. It's going to be like a, I guess, like a detune sports car a little bit. Um, R5 is going to be the Ferrari, and the R6 will probably be a uh, Datsun 120Y. Maybe not. <laughs> um, yeah, so heaps happening in the world. Good to see some more. Yeah, nothing, uh, the world hasn't stopped. We're all alive, we're still going. Hope you're all safe and sound on this Thursday. We've got tomorrow, Friday, and then the weekend. If you're at work, well then you get two days of sort of de-stress and probably stop thinking about it and just go back to normal weekend stuff. And I guess that's probably a good thing for us all, just to get back into a bit of normal switch off and relax a bit, be home with your family and not think about this um, isolation issue. But um, that's it from me. Have a great Thursday. Great to see you come past and pop in and see me and have a cuppa with us. Don't forget, merch is on the store, hook, hook a brother up. And I'll see you all tomorrow, Friday, the end of the week. Uh, if you're going that way to the subscribe button or that way to the thumbs up or thumbs down, or hitting that bell, ding ding. I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace.